Welcome everybody to the session about the Overpass API. It will merely be a talk, but feel free to, to break me for questions. And thank you for coming here and uh, to hear about the new version of Overpass API. It's version 0.7.50. I've jumped from 4 to 50, not, to, not because it's just, uh, such a great step, but uh, to keep the lexicographical order if I need more than nine version, subversions of 07. Okay, but the more interesting thing is there are some news on current data. And there's an entirely new functionality to keep with, uh, to, to query for history data. And uh, this has also an effect on the augmented diffs. They get also an entirely new implementation, which is a uh, purpose on its own because uh, the old augmented diffs are really piling up on the hard disk. They are surpassing the one terabyte and go straight to the two terabyte and they would exhaust the disk. So I have to find a way to, dis, uh, to, to generate them dynamically. Okay, and I'll finish with a, with a single slide about the future roadmap. Okay, so let's start with uh, the improvements for current data. The first thing is uh, you're now able to print immediately uh, the geometry on ways or relations. And uh, the simplest case for this is the out center that's already uh, also implemented by Martin Reifer in the overpass turbo. There will also, if you choose this option, he will show a single uh, node instead of the entire way. And it has the, uh, the advantage that it's faster and for several purposes it's enough to get the center. One remark about the center, you often hear in context of uh, geoinformatics a centroid. Well, while it's fine to have a centroid, I just, uh, I just have been lazy. My center is uh, the middle of the um, smallest enclosing bounding box, so it's not really a centroid. In case of a centroid, you would have to really do some smart things if a way is not closed and if it's self-intersecting and all these things that may happen in OpenStreetMap. And I decided to, to not do that and rather do the center, which is for most purposes enough. Center is somewhere close. It's a point that's somehow meaningful relative to the geometry of the way. So in the formal definition is it's the center of the enclosing bounding box. This will fit into a whole new set of uh, out uh, options, which is uh, the one out text. I will say more about that in a moment. The center is what you just have seen. This will add to to ways and relations um, align with, uh, with the center declaration where the center is instead of giving all uh, coordinates. This bounding box will instead present to the bounding box of the element. And geometry will show the full, full geometry. In any case, you don't have to do this nasty recurse down. You just can work with the way or relation as it is. Okay, just a word about the text. I was asked to, to, make this, uh, to make this out statement more flexible. And one of the things that was requested is when I want to do something like uh, find a relation like the German relation, I don't want to see uh, the zillion of elements uh, that are members of this relation. I just want to get its tags. For that reason, there is this option to output only tags. So now you are a little bit more flexible about this output. So a few words about the geometric print, geom. It will add coordinates immediately to a way. This is important in particular in context of historic objects. We will see in context of historic objects, we, uh, we often have that the uh, meta information of the way some, the thing that isn't printed here, like version and so on, doesn't change, but the race geometry changed because uh, the node moved. And uh, to make this at least visible, what has happened, it's uh, in really useful to have the geometry immediately on the element. Therefore, it's now possible to print the geometry immediately on the element itself, instead of doing this, uh, retrieving the coordinates of the nodes and then resolving them back. Same thing for relations. 
this, uh, the chosen syntax is uh, not particularly smart or deliberate. It's just at will to solve the problem. We, for nodes, it's uh, like for node members of ways. I just add the latitude and longitude. And for way members, I mimic the uh, style of, uh, of way members itself. So the member way element has now sub elements and D listing all the latitude and longitude of, uh, of the respective way. So you can get immediately the relation and immediately draw the relation without uh, referring to the sub objects of the relation. There's also the option to restrict the bounding box of the geometry. This is again in case you are, think of you are catching a boundary relation like of uh, Germany, Great Britain or whatever. And uh, you don't want to see uh, the coordinates for 10,000 of nodes. And this is, gives you the option to only see a smart, uh, small part and just to ignore the coordinates of the rest. It makes the whole thing a lot faster. Works for ways as well as for relations, where you have, um, where I would uh, just uh, leave these empty and D elements. This will allow you to match the coordinates to uh, the ways nodes if uh, necessary. So for that reason, there are empty and D elements. This will also tell you um, that uh, you can't draw the line straight, but that they are, um, if you have just, well, it's a little bit difficult. I should have prepared a sl uh, slide for this. Imagine you have a boundary that's going twice through your, through your bounding box. Then you would like to know that these are two distinct sections you are seeing in the geometry. And for that reason, there are these ND elements that will tell you that there are other way nodes that, or that there are other nodes that have been, have been left out because they are out of the bounding box and that you are seeing two distinct sections and not one new section forming the boundary. So, um, Yes, it's uh, so. I, ah, I would. I also should have told you that uh, that is why this is green. I not only give the nodes that are in the bounding box, but also the first node that's outside the bounding box to allow you to properly draw the thing. It should also. I don't know. I don't remember if I have implemented it, but it should also if it's just crossing a bounding box without a node. It should uh, print the two coordinates such that such that you get the segment even if no node is inside, but I'm not sure if I've implemented it. If not, it's a bug. Okay, it's in any, any way faster than without a bounding box. Okay, another thing less important because, not really more important, but uh, not without a change of the interface is uh, sparse large bounding boxes. A thing I have told you in Birmingham that it is uh, unfortunately very slow and a lot of people ask me, uh, if it is really necessary that it is so slow. And so um, I took this feedback to redesign the entire backend, and now it's much faster. Now the backend is optimized for, uh, to not, yes, in some kind it's, it's optimized to do these uh, sparse queries reasonably well. So you can now do things like get me all places, get me all nodes that are tagged as play city in Germany. This will run less than a minute. Or even that's what Martin Reifer has presented to me as an example was, uh, oh cool, it works. He just zoomed out to entire Europe and collected all capitals. And this was run within some seconds. That's really, that was really impressive. I didn't, ha I hadn't expected that it is, uh, that it worked so well. Another thing uh, is uh, the difference statement. It's, uh, in particular cases, it's very useful. If you want to know features, that have some properties, but not, if you want to cut out a certain amount of features, for example, in this case, you could also solve this another way, but it's just to, to present the thing. And you could select all railway rails that are, um, that are, that don't have an electrified contact line. It will leave out these rails that are merely connected to freight services here in the, and the port, and I think this is some industrial factory, and this is probably the, the freight station. And uh, <laughs> the more interesting case is when you use this in, together in conjunction with newer or so, where you could now get all elements that have changed within a certain amount of time. 
if you put the newer date here and the older date here, then you would get automatically all elements that have changed. Uh, no, it's the other way around. So older here and the newer here. Then you have all the elements that have changed within uh, the time frame. A small detail is that I have uh, put the area into a separate variable. It's a pitfall that often happens even to me. We need this area twice. It's the reason why we put it in a separate variable. Otherwise, the ways would override this area in the first step, and then we won't have the area for selecting in the second step. Okay, sorry? Why did you use an integer tag and not the main tag? The um, because, ah, that's one of the funny things about... Okay, uh, the question was why I did use the Wikipedia and not the name tag. The reason is that there is a small city in the US, I don't know where exactly, a small city in the US called Karlsruhe, with a stretch of railway that is not electrified. <laughs> it's, uh, so um, if you search for a name, you will get um, a cluster around Karlsruhe and a small piece in the United States. And so, it, so I choose the Wikipedia tag. And that's another story, and I think that's not to be solved in Overpass, but uh, there are quite a lot of cities you can only find over the Wikipedia tag because uh, the name tag is not that useful. Um, okay, let's get to two new AP API calls. One is uh, the, the map call, this should mimic the map call and the export call on OSM arc. This is... Um, merely to allow to get uh, larger chunks of data without, uh, disturbing the main, without disturbing the main server. And uh, this is even um, accessible from the export tab, a thank to the authors of the um, OpenStreetMap uh, website. You can just, when you get to the export tab, you will see that there is immediately this, um, this option to choose from, and this will retain the bounding box. So if you click this, you get immediately the map you see here. As, uh, open, as OSM raw data. Like it would be if you hit the export button, but it also would work for bigger areas. And also some useful small thing, that's the, that's the API timestamp. That's uh, just to show you the time and the current state of the database. Another way to get this would be to, to put an arbitrary query on the on the API and read the, the date in the meta section of the answer, but it's more complex to, to pass a piece of XML just to get a date. So I added this, uh, this call, which is more straightforward, to, to check whether the, uh, what's the current state of the mirror database. Well, let's talk about what's uh, about retrieving attic data. First, the wording thing. I would uh, insist on calling all this uh, attic data and not history data, because there's also a project, uh, OpenStreetMap historical map, and they are mapping really historical fa uh, features like en ancient Roman roads and so on. And uh, you will never be able to, to uh, query for Roman roads in a database that dates back to only 2012. So um, I decided to use rather the term from uh, from version management, where you would call the the not the, the no longer act, uh, current version of a file, you would call them attic files. So for that reason, I would prefer to talk of attic data and not of history data, to not confuse it with the uh, OpenStreetMap historical map. But uh, in all other purposes, when you hear an history somewhere else, it's probably the same than attic data. Okay, just a small proof of concept. Uh, the this website is live and you can uh, play with it. And uh, I think there's even a better version in uh, an Overpass API slash Akavi, but I'm not sure how, mm, how ready it is. Uh, it's not okay, it's not deployed yet. Thank you. Okay, it's, um, this is like usual. I'm not, a UE and I'm not a user interface expert, so it's had a horrible UE. It's just to demonstrate the technology. And what does it? It will show you new data and change data with, uh, that has changed uh, within the last uh, 24 hours. So it's a simple reporting tool to learn what has happened in the last 24 hours in, in a certain bounding box. 
I use this to monitor what has happened in, in my neighborhood. And the building, the first building block to, uh, to do this is to retrieve the state of the database at a given state in the past. This is done with this uh, date statement. That's the simple idea. Uh, that's the idea to, to keep it uh, to keep it as simple as possible. I just uh, added. Uh, you just have to add this clause date, and then you will get the result of this query of this arbitrary query below, as it were at the given date here. So that's, uh, from the mindset, it's the simplest thing to do. Just uh, what happens here is just you get the request as if you had put the request on uh, a new year uh, 2013 and uh, stored it on your disk. That's the same way. That's it makes thinking of what happens quite easy. One thing you can do with this is uh, I should tell you something about this in a moment, is you can retrieve old data. For example, here somebody has uh, removed, they indeed removed um, ramp for cars to get, on a, to get on a car transport train. And uh, you can just get it by asking for how did the data look on C uh, 2013. And one thing I should note is the areas, whatever is called area here, is a live feature uh, is a feature that's uh, derived from live data that's not from past data that's uh, that's merely because i didn't have time to implement something uh, useful th for this and so they are just uh, generated from the present this is also the example if somebody has broken the polygon in the past then uh, the area would also be uh, available in the present state so you have a very high chance that the area actually exists in a meaningful way. The rationale why I could do this is that areas are anyway not an OpenStreetMap type, so I won't grant that they would uh, require the stricter requirements of, the, uh, of being exactly that state at that date. The next step is to not get the state at a certain date, but the diff between two states. This will tell you what has changed to the result of this query between uh, these dates. For example, you can ask what has changed in this year for, for these uh, railway rails uh, in, uh, in the small town, town called Trostorf. And this will show you the diff between the two results. This is computed during print time. This is important in so far that if you use out meter, geom, and with a bounding box here, then it would restrict it, like I've shown you before, it would be restricted to that bounding box. It would help you if you ask for a small bounding box, um, for example, like this one. You see the river of Rhine is crossing here. There's also a railway, a very important railway line crossing here. And if you haven't this, if you had not this restriction to the global bounding box, you will always see changes on this railway and on the river, because somewhere in probably Rotterdam or Basel, Moved, uh, moved a cobblestone or a tree or whatever on, this, on the Rhine, and so the Rhine would be marked as changed, and that's not useful. Same thing for the railway. There might be some change somewhere, even uh, 100 kilometers away, and this would be marked as changed if we did not uh, make this uh, filtering for, um, for the bounding box. That's why it's possible to do this, uh, to do this uh, filtering for the global bounding box here. Um, a small syntactic sugar is that you can leave out the second date. In this case, it will make the diff to the current date because it's probably the thing you, mo you need the most often. What will it create? Well, there are, certain, there are three types of actions that may happen. This mimics the behavior in the OSC file, in the OSC file format, in the OSM change file format. There is an action type create, an action type delete, and an action type modify. Delete and modify have these old and new sections. Create has no old or new section because create will always have, uh, there will be never an, an, an old state. It always contains only new data. So what does it contain? Create, an action create is printed when the object with this ID is new. 
oh, the abstract process ID is contained in the newer result, but not in the older result. So exa for example, just imagine you ask for a small bounding box and somebody moves the node inside the bounding box, then you will see this node as, uh, then you will see this node as being created uh, because it's the first time that it, it appears in your bounding box. That's the right thing to do if you want to, to keep uh, data current uh, for a certain query or for a certain bounding box. That's why it's done with this create statement. So in fact, one is a subcase of two. But the important thing to keep in mind is um, it may happen, even if you do a change, um, if you do a diff between 2014 and 2013, it may happen that you get an element from 2012 because it just moved in. It just moved into the result of your query. The more difficult thing is that the same thing may happen to delete. This action type delete may have appear if the object with the ID really had gone. Or if the object with this ID is contained in the older result, but not in the newer result. Note again, it's exactly similar like before. One is a subcase of two. Just it is even uh, harder to remember that it's possible that uh, the way appears as action type delete, even if the way has not been deleted, but just moved out of the bounding box you are considering, or moved out, out of the other criteria you are considering. Same thing if you imagine there was a tag uh, highway equals something on the way and somebody deleted the tag highway equals something and your query was uh, give me all ways with highway equals something. Then this will also appear as deleting. So let's get to the modify thing. This is printed when the object with this ID differ by text, by members, or by geometry. Similar problem as before. It may happen that you get an action type modify where old and new are exactly the same. Sounds, uh, looks uh, totally insane. That is why it's most often useful to use not uh, the general out statement, but uh, out geometry, because then it will tell you with out geometry that whoop, this has happened because the node has changed its geometry. That's why we see this, uh, this element changing. Um, yes, ah, so it's reminding me that I should tell you about the effect I've mentioned before. If you put a global bound, uh, if you put a bounding box on the geometry output, then it will, would leave out the nodes that are anyway outside the bounding box with the effect that now the ways are exactly the same because they have the same version. Oh, I've missed the version attribute. Sorry, there should be the same version. Imagine both have version, let's say one. Both have the same uh, version and timestamp information. Both have the same, nem have the same members, 50, 51 and 52. And now with the restricted geometry, both have the same geometry with uh, this node, this node, and this somewhere outside, don't know. So this will be, if you search uh, for, the, for the diff with this output statement, it will in fact, this, the entire block will in fact not, uh, not appear because now it will be considered the same. This is what, what I just have mentioned. This allows us in, a bounding, in the bounding box scene before, not to see in every, each and every change uh, the changes of the Rhine because the change of the Rhine happened somewhere else. This is, as I've told you, a protection against large objects piling up in the results. Well, some caution. It's still not that ready and complete as I had expected. I'm still working on, through certain bugs that have appeared. The general, the general line is uh, every data, every all current data is totally okay. The attic data is just an enhancement of the existing data. Uh, it's just an enhancement of the existing software. So uh, the current data is as stable as in the previous version. So there's, there are no inconsistencies in the current data. There are also no inconsistencies in, 
in ETIC data that has been produced since the 2nd of June 2014. However, there are in inconsistencies in ETIC data that might be older. I'm working through this. I hope I have fixed it on, uh, at some point in July. What has happened, I have uh, overseen some special cases when, uh, when the node is moving twice within the same minute. And uh, I considered that this is an important case, but I forgot it is an, at some point a standard sort, which with the result that they have been sorted in the wrong order which finally resulted in uh, messing up the, the ethic data of ways. And uh, so I have to recompile the database. And this will take until July, but the good news is um, the current data is working as well, so there's no, um, <coughs> there's no regression. And for ethic data, you can experiment with data since 2nd of June. That's also safe. Okay, so I can talk about um, the new format for augmented diffs. This is essentially the same as the diff statement. In particular, the diff statement was designed with in mind with, to replace the old augmented diff mechanism. It's just a slight change. It's called a diff. Why do we do this? Why do we need, in fact, a different format to the diff at all? Because some people uh, need the deletion date of elements. They really want, when an element is deleted, they really want to know the deletion element, uh, deletion date of the element. So this deletion date should be present in the augmented diff. So a diff will show you the diff between two results, like before. It only augments the action delete with a new section. What's now new is the action delete contains a new section, uh, as opposed to diff. In a diff, the um, the section contains a new section, uh, the action type delete contains a new section, where you would see either visible equals false, if the element has really been deleted, then this is the deletion date, or visible true, if the element still exists, but it is not part of the result. And in this case, you will also don't get uh, the coordinates because they are deemed uh, irrelevant. In this case, there are no coordinates. A deleted element has no coordinates. So this will give you essentially a hint whether the element has been deleted or not. And it's also the only way to retrieve the deletion date uh, via the overpass API. It was a little bit tricky because the deletion is never, a deleted object is never the result of a query for whatever. So I either had to design special queries that query for deleted objects for whatever means, or just uh, bring it somewhere else. And I decided to, to integrate it in the augmented diffs because people who use the augmented diffs anyway have asked for getting deletion dates. Okay, the last thing we need to make the augmented diffs run is the change statement. The change statement will filter for elements that have changed between the given dates. For example, you can write a thing like this, or this, you can combine it with other things. And the important thing is, assume you have a node that, have, that has got its version, let's say, 1 at the 1st of 2013, its version 2 at the 3rd of July and during this time span, and then version 3, somewhere in 2014. If you are asking for, uh, with, uh, yeah, if we are asking with, uh, with date 2013, uh, July or August, you will get indeed the uh, version 2 that was in this time span. But if you were asking for 2014, when the node has changed again, you will get the recent information. That's not a pity, that's just consistent with the framework, because you can always if you keep this date and the changed in sync with uh, the date you are asking for, then you are, can be sure that you see really the version that is what has been subject to the change. So what you may know is the API augmented diff call. This will now just convert. This is just a wrapper for converting to API interpreter and this query. This query is what has happened. We have expanded the ID to these dates, to the start date and the end date. And we used the ADIF because we want an augmented diff output. 
and we ask for all nodes, for all ways and for all relations that have changed in this time and we ask for their geometry and we ask to print them with everything including their geometry. Sorry? Uh, this change rate number. No, it's not the standard change rate number. I will come to this in a moment. The question was uh, what the ID number is. Um, I decided to to make it computable. It's really it's it's basically the change rate number, but uh, the change rate number may from time to time skip a minute. I decided to to make an artificial change rate number that so that you don't have to care about this. It's strictly one plus one per minute since 2012, 9th, 9th of September. So these will in general be a few hundred numbers uh, in advance of the standard change set numbers. Um, because they really go up once per one minute per minute. Okay, As a detail I should also tell you is uh, if you add the debug equals yes, you will see what uh, query is generated because now you can query for other time spent than a minute. You could just, if you want an hour, you just put everywhere here, you put everywhere here the difference of an hour. Put every, put here 22 o'clock in all four positions and here 21 o'clock in all four positions. So then you get the, the augmented diffs uh, once per hour. And um, the augmented diff status will tell you the last stable augmented diff number, which is just derived from timestamp. So you could also compute it, if you have the date, you could also compute the number by just uh, doing this comments on a normal, uh, in a normal, uh, on a normal comment line. It's just a uh, bash syntax. Okay, so I'll conclude with uh, the future roadmap. Well, the first thing is uh, to really get this version done. I've uh, by far underestimated the amount of doing properly uh, this history parsing. So um, I expected this to work after three months and now it has taken more than a year to write this software. So uh, I'm just desperately trying to really publish something that is uh, somehow stable. So I will, the first step I'll do is uh, once I have fixed at least the most urgent security issues and once I have write, written at least the basic documentation, which is totally lacking at the moment, I will um, publish this as a version. Uh, I will publish this as version uh, 0.7.50 and uh, probably I'll also do the debug of the ETIC database uh, before end such that the, the thing you, uh, you can use then is at least stable. The next step then is uh, to make development more modular. Is, uh, I think when I, once I have uh, released and tagged that version on GitHub, I'll branch for every new feature from that version. And so that you can, whenever a feature is complete, decide to either take it to your installation or not. And then when enough features are implemented, I will bundle them to the next release. This is um, probably will help more to, to do bug fixes if necessary. So also the second thing is it will also more um, uh, also put more emphasis on GitHub because uh, it's the best way at the moment for me to, to, uh, sort, uh, to sort the issues that come up. So I will um, works through the issues that are mentioned here. So if you have a feature request, uh, it's a general, it's a good idea just to open an issue there because I will remember them if they are there. If you write an email to me, I'm grateful for this, but I will also, this will also result in that I will essentially copy paste your email to a new GitHub issue because uh, it's the best way to remember these things. I need a tracker and uh, it's also the best way to to make it as public as possible what's currently, what's currently going on. A thing I consider is on the back end to do compression because the database is uh, now surpassing with history. It's now surpassing 400 gigabytes, which is really large. In fact, the database uh, fits, uh, fits barely on the um, SSD that has just been on uh, get on, in service. So I'm, 
So I'm rather desperately trying to integrate compression before the SSD gets full. And um, but it's also I think it's it, the database should not be bigger than uh, 400 gigabytes just uh, just because it's difficult for everybody who wants to install a copy to uh, to have such an, a large amount of uh, of data. So this is a thing I I think about. And the second thing I think about is uh, to handle change set comments and, or to handle change set at all, I should rather say. Because uh, they are now available as stream. I'm uh, right, it's, they are planned to be stable available on the replication? Uh, or is it more merely experimental? Oh. There is a stream on planet Orbis M org um, replication change sets. I, it's now available for half a year or a year, so so I assume it's stable. Okay, I'll ask Brett. But uh, I think I'll try to integrate this because people asked for getting or doing queries that relate somehow to change sets, and that's really a useful idea. For example, uh, find all changes that have been made by a particular editor, and you can get, learn the editor only from the change set comment, and so it would be useful to to use change sets for queries. And uh, this is also one thing I would plan for the foreseeable future, together with uh, the things mentioned here in the, um, in the GitHub issues. For example, there are suggestions for uh, having a statement that will allow you to, once you have uh, got a node to, and you have a way that has been parted several times to get the entire property of ways with uh, the entire grid of ways that have a certain property and so on. It's really a nice list of features, but I have to go, to go through them one by one. And really the first thing I would like to do is to really publish the version, uh, the current version. But this should, be on, should only happen if it is reasonably stable. And I'm still, uh, after fixing the last round of bugs, I found the inconsistencies. I'm still rebuilding the database and uh, running tests whether there are still any bugs around. And I hope I won't find any bugs, and if then, I will publish the version in a couple of days. Okay, thank you for your attention. Are there questions? Yes? You have the possibility to run your own instance of overpass. Is it possible to run without the attic to save space in the local database? Yes, it's at least designed to be possible and should be possible. I haven't tested it on the new version, but it's uh, it's possible. Possible but untested. Let's say it's there that way. Other questions? Yes? Um, as of we have the attic, um, it would be really interesting to do statistics. For um, it wouldn't be hard. I would. Uh, I think the best way is to make uh, to open an issue for this and then discuss the details for this. And um, yes, account feature. The, the question was to have a count feature um, where you, where the, which would count how much elements are found by a certain query. That's now basically available if you choose the ID output and then count all the elements. But then you are really transmitting a lot of data just for if you, in fact, only want the number. So it would be useful to have that. Okay, other questions? Yes? If I use a, a diff query uh, and I have uh, from beginning of 2013 to end of 2013, do I get only the uh, changes from the first one uh, change to the last one change or all changes between? Uh, you get only the difference between the first and the last change. This is uh, for the reason, otherwise you would have to expect for large objects really a ton of changes. One, when debugging the version, uh, when debugging this, uh, this ethic bug, I discovered that I think there are more than a million versions of the German boundary due to minor move node moves. So um, for that reason, you only get the first and the last version. I thought about having a, an additional feature called uh, probably any time or something like this that will show you that will show step by step what happened to uh, to the objects in a result. But that's really a lot of work to do to do it reasonably. So I won't expect it to appear in the next 12 months. 
and it's probably low priority uh, behind a lot of other features that are now in the issue tracker. Uh, yes? So, um, I'm really excited about the history feature, first and foremost, but a follow-up question to the, um, to the, reach, uh, to the, um, to the uh, this mirror, if you want to host a mirror, is it um, easy to do that for a, region, for a region, or would you definitely want to do it for the entire plan? Um, the question was whether it's easy to keep up a mirror for a region, and yes, it perf perfectly makes sense. You know, I think the thing I would do is, uh, I don't know where you get the diffs from. Um, well, one has to think how to make a proper leap diffing, but uh, otherwise, on the other hand, you could just load in uh, an extract, for example, from Geophobic, and uh, then uh, keep this. I think there are also diffs in, on the Geophobic part daily or so. And use this, um, should work should scale in most cases there are some you may waste some disk space because there are, it will um, the map files will cluster um, over groups of node IDs and uh, when you have them sparse uh, the map file won't uh, won't shrink so probably you are going to waste something like 30 gigabytes of disk space but i think that's acceptable it won't affect performance or stability so you can host a smaller region yes What was added only in uh, from like 17 May to 20 May, yet uh, in a certain city or bounding box? Just what what added in these three days? I think you can use the diff feature for this, and then you will get what has uh, what has changed, which uh, would in particular contain also what has been added. And uh, I think it's the most reasonable way just to do it that way, and then to to throw away from the result what you don't need. Because still in OpenStreetMap, more than 70% of all edits are adding something. And uh, I'm not sure what there's a way to, to get rid of all, the, of all the things that have been deleted. Um, what you could probably do is add a newer clause. Just try it. Then probably you won't see the, uh, the deleted date because uh, this is uh, deleted. Data won't uh, won't fit to the newer clause. Yes, but for that purpose, I thought about this. For that purpose, there was a really excellent talk on in Birmingham about this: how to make our, um, out of the progress of for mapping page, uh, pay, um, from a mapping party a really um, a movie or a video from how the map has changed, and. Uh, I think for that purpose, I would really use this uh, date feature. I would just uh, retrieve uh, snapshots of the entire city every, let's say, five minutes or 15 minutes, and then render a frame from each of this. Rendering a frame will, with Mapnik on a city level will take uh, far less than an hour. Fetching it from overpass will take also far less than, or far less than a minute or some minutes. So I think you can at least, it would be difficult to do it live, but there are other ways to do it live, uh, to do monitor changes live. But uh, at least you can produce, when you have a ma mapping party over the day, you can produce in an automated fashion. When you start after the mapping party, you can uh, show the video a day after or so. So uh, it's, it's probably the, most, uh, the best way to, uh, to start off to, to Rewatch this uh, Birmingham talk and then uh, then apply these new capabilities to to make the workflow that has been suggest suggested there easier. They had really put some work to to get this stiff data and now you get it uh, almost for free. Okay, more questions. Okay, then I thank you for yeah yes. Uh, how can I query? Uh, I, I want to get the uh, object with a specific uh, tag when it. So, I, for example, who made a address house number to an object? I want uh, to make this query. Is it possible? Um, it's uh, not that easy, but uh, the thing I would uh, suggest is like inversion control to do uh, bisection. That is, you start with uh, you start uh, you start with a, with a time frame where you are sure that it is inside. For example, for the years or ten years. 
and then you split it by two and again by two and again by two unless you are really in a smart uh, in a sufficiently small time frame where this change has happened and then if you are if you know the time frame when this change has happened you could see who has done it by just using the meta feature which will print the metadata on this uh, feature okay more questions then i thank you for the attention and we have now the lunch break and i'm even uh, before the schedule so there are i think there are two hours to have lunch and uh, do hacking until we uh, uh, until we uh, proceed with uh, a talk by andy and andy Allen about uh, openstreetmap and uh, carto okay <laughs>